Hi, and welcome to lesson four, where we continue with our analysis of uh, Fourier series. Let's begin with step one on complex coefficients. So recall that the uh, complex Fourier series for a periodic function is given as follows. We've got our function f of t expressed as a sum of coefficients cn and these rotating exponential terms, omega naught and times t where the coefficients themselves are given by the following expression, which we derived in the previous lesson. So, there are a few changes in notation from the previous uh, case. In particular, we're not uh, uh, talking about the uh, spatial coordinate x, but we are talking about the time coordinate t. But that's really uh, all that, that's changed. And that's mainly because uh, in this lesson and in the following lessons, we'll be talking about time series, about signals, and so on. So it's more convenient to get used to uh, time coordinate uh, now. And also we introduced this notation omega naught, which is the fundamental frequency given by this following expression. Omega naught is just uh, 2 pi divided by the period of the function. And in this step in particular, we will be looking at these coefficients right here. And uh, we know that they can be complex and we would like to know when and how do they become uh, complex. So let's start with a very simple example of a cosine function. In here, in this example, we're considering the fundamental frequency to be one, so omega naught is one, therefore the function is just given by cosine of t. So we can see that it's a two pi periodic function. And we know from previous lessons that its Fourier series expansion is given by the following coefficients, where again, cn is given by this following expression, we are uh, integrating over um, minus pi to pi. So the function is two pi periodic. We are dividing by one over two pi. And we've got the function itself weighted by this complex uh, exponential. And we know that all of these terms are equal to zero, except for when n is equal to plus or minus one. And in that case, cn is equal to a half. So if you plot it, or uh, like this, we only have two contributions to the Fourier series, when n is equal to one and n is equal to minus one. And here on this axis, on the vertical axis, we are plotting the absolute value of the coefficient cn. In this case, it doesn't really matter because they are real anyway, but um, for later when they become complex, just bear in mind that the vertical axis represents the modulus of the complex number. So let's just check that our Fourier series is correct. We substitute into our uh, series expansion, we've got cn of minus one times e to the power of minus it plus c1 times e to the it. We know, both, we know that both c1 and c minus one are equal to a half, so we've got a half times the sum of the two exponentials, which we immediately can recognize as the cosine of t. So that's good, that's working as, in, as, as it's supposed to be. Now imagine that we shift our function a little bit. Instead of having cosine of t, we have this orange line, which is cosine of t plus phi. And the question is now, how does it change our spectrum? How does it change the coefficients in our series expansion? So let's see what happens. The frequency of the function has not really changed. So we expect that the frequency contributions are still at the same locations as they were before. Remember, before they were when n is equal to plus one and n is equal to minus one. Otherwise, there were zero everywhere. We expect this to be the case here as well. We're not changing the frequency of function, we're just translating it uh, a little bit by a, a amount of phi. So, as I said, the peaks should be all still located at plus one and minus one. So what does change? Well, let's, let's do it the hard way and let's compute the integrals and the coefficients cn. So again, instead of cosine of t, now we are, our, our function is given by cosine of t plus phi. And if we uh, evaluate this integral, what we get is the following product. We have a product of something of this fraction that is a function of n only. And then phi only enters into the product in here. So we see when phi is equal to zero, which was our initial function cosine of t, this complex number here disappears because sine of zero is equal to zero. But this is not true for general phi. This is not true for general phase shifts. So the cn in general is a complex number. So we see that when we introduce a phase shift, we uh, turn the cn to be a complex number in general. 
And just to see how this CN now behaves, here we are plotting uh, n and we are considering it to be a real number. So our argument is n and again we are interested in the modulus of the complex uh, coefficients Cn. And we really only care about the values where n is an integer, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and also for the negative uh, values as well. So we can see what happens is that at n it's always 0, whether we are considering this blue line, which is uh, for a particular case of phi equals to pi over 4, or we are considering a different sh a phase shift, which is uh, the orange line. And they always interlap or overlap at the um, places where n is an integer. So n is equal to minus 1, 0, 2, and, and so on. So from that we can infer that the spectrum, in other words the modulus of the coefficients, still remains the same. We all, the only non-zero contributions are at n is minus 1 and n is plus 1. And it's 0 everywhere else. So by taking the limit, of the first part of the product, where n is equal to plus and minus 1, we can see that that is equal to plus or minus 1 over 2. So finally, our complex coefficients are given as follows. c of plus or minus 1 is equal to this complex number. It's plus or minus 1 over 2 times plus or minus cosine of phi plus i sine phi. So let's see that we haven't, uh, let's check that we haven't made a mistake. Let's substitute back into our Fourier series and see if we recover the original function. So again, in our series, we only have two uh, terms, c minus 1 times e to the minus i t and c1 uh, e to the i t. And now what we do is we just substitute back and after a little bit of algebra, there will be some cancellations, some additions, and what we recover is this expression, cos t times sine phi minus sine t times sine phi. And I'm sure you can recognize that as just being cosine of t plus phi, which was our initial function, so everything is fine. So, in summary, this is our complex Fourier series with complex coefficients. And these coefficients become complex when we introduce a phase shift into our function. And these phase shifts, really what they mean are time delays. So when we are considering some signal processing uh, and we have some time delay, this will change the coefficients in such a way that they will make them complex. Now the modulus of the CN or the amplitude represent the weight uh, of that particular frequency contribution into the series. If you remember from previous lessons where we were doing a Fourier series of a delta function, all the harmonics were equally important. But this is not generally true, and some simple functions like cosine of t, which we have seen in this lesson, they only have two contributions from n equals plus 1 and n equals minus 1. But you have to bear in mind that everything we have done in previous lesson and in the first step of this lesson applies only to periodic functions. Meaning that if we have any general signal, we cannot really apply all of this beautiful machinery which we have developed. So now the question is, how do we deal with non-periodic functions? And that's when Fourier transforms come in, which we will see in the next step.